All right, in section 7.4, we're going to talk about applying properties of similar triangles. Now, why do we use this? Artists use similarity and proportionality to give paintings an illusion of depth. Artists use mathematical techniques to make two-dimensional paintings appear three-dimensional. The invention of perspective was based on the observation that faraway objects look smaller and closer objects look larger. So, mathematical theorems like the triangle proportionality theorem are important in making perspective drawings. So, the triangle proportionality theorem says this. If a line parallel to the side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So here's what it looks like. We have a line that is parallel to another side of that triangle, and it intersects the other two sides. So it divides the sides proportionally. So what does it state? It states then that segment AE and segment EB, their lengths are proportional. The same thing here. The length of AF divided by the length of FC would equal the length of AE divided by the length of EB. You can use a compass and a straight edge construction to verify this theorem. Although the construction is not a proof, it should help convince you that the theorem is true. After you have completed the construction, use a ruler and you could see that the, proportion, uh, the sides are proportional. So here's what you would do. You would use a straight edge to draw a triangle. The second step is to draw any point that you want on one of the sides. In this case, we have a point E labeled as E on the length AB. Then you've constructed these before. You're going to construct two congruent angles. So you're going to figure out this angle, and then you're going to construct an angle just like it, a congruent angle, corresponding angles. You did that back, I believe, in either chapter 3 or chapter 4. Then where it intersects right there, you're going to draw your line, and you've just drawn a line parallel to segment BC. In example one, we want to find the length of CY. And I'm going to mark that right here with an X. All you do is write a proportion. It's fairly easy. Using the triangle proportionality theorem, we could say the ratio of 9 over 4 equals the ratio 10 over x. Now we could also say, for example, x over 4 equals 10 over 9. There are many other proportions we could write as well. Cross multiply, that gives me 9x equals 40. And so 40 divided by x would be 4 and 4 ninths. You could also leave that as the improper fraction, 40 ninths. The converse of the triangle proportionality theorem is just the opposite of what we just learned. If a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it's parallel to the third side. So if you know, for example, the lengths of AE and EB are equal to the ratio of the lengths of AF and FC, then we know the line EF is parallel to the segment BC. So in example two, I want to verify that segment MN and segment KL are parallel. So we have to write each side as a proportion. So we could say, for example, that 21 over 42 equals 15 over 30. Since each of these, if we're checking to see if they're equal, 21 40 seconds simplifies into 1 half, as does 15 over 30, therefore they are equal. So by the triangle proportionality theorem, the converse of it, we can say that segments MN and KL are parallel. Now once again, you could have said 42 divided by 21 and 30 divided by 15, and you could have showed me that the ratios of the sides were two. That would also work. We are now gonna talk about a corollary, and this is the two transversal proportionality. In this, it says if three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. So if we look at our picture, we have three or more parallel lines. And it should say that these are parallel. 
If we know that, then we could say that AC, the length of AC, divided by the length of CE, equals the ratio of the lengths of BD and DF. So here's example three. An artist used perspective to draw guidelines to help her sketch a row of parallel trees. She then checked the drawings by measuring the distance between the trees. What is the length of LN? So we want to know this length right here from L to N. Now there are a few ways you can do this, but when I look at this, I figure once again I need to write a ratio equal to another ratio. So using our two transversal proportionality, I could say this. I'm going to color code this. I could say that the length of AB, which is this, divided by the length of BD is equal to the length of KL divided by the length of LN, and that's what we need to find. So now we can plug in those values. The length of AB is 2.4. The length of BD, well, that's 2.2 plus 1.4. That gives us 3.6 equals KL, which is 2.6, over LN, which is what we need to find. Once again, that could be a variable. I cross multiply, and 2 and 4 tenths multiplied by LN equals 3 and 6 tenths times 2 and 6 tenths, and that gives us 9.36. Divide both sides by 2.4, and the length of LN would be 3 and 9 tenths. So our answer would be 3.9 centimeters. So the previous theorems and corollary lead to the following conclusion. And here it is, the triangle angle bisector theorem. So let's say this again, the triangle angle bisector theorem. Here's what it states. An angle bisector of a triangle divides the opposite side into two segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the two other sides. So let's slow this down and start over again. If we bisect an angle in a triangle, that means that the lengths of the sides across from it that's been divided into, for example, the length of BD divided by the length of DC would be equal to the lengths of the other two sides. So we could say is equal to the length of AB divided by the length of AC. So in example four, using the triangle angle bisector theorem, we want to find the lengths of RV and VT. So we know that these are the sides opposite the bisected angle. So we could say that x plus 2, now this is only one way to set it up, divided by 2x plus 1 would be equal to 10 divided by 14. We then cross multiply, so that would give me 14 distributed into x plus 2, which is 14x plus 28, equals 20x plus 10. I now solve. If you solve this, you would get 6x equals 18, and x equals 3. Plug it in. That would give me the length of RV as 3 plus 2, which is 5, and the length of VT, which is 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, is 7. So the two lengths are 5 and 7.